Hello, uh, my name is Zahra. I uh, work at Microsoft. Uh, my background is mostly on uh, various aspects of systems, uh, security, compartmentalization, and um, this talk is about one of the projects we are doing in Azure Sphere team on secure and dynamic hardware partitioning. Heterogeneous architectures are becoming more and more popular as our applications are uh, getting more uh, complex, their designs, uh, their dependencies, so uh, our workloads are uh, getting more complex. Uh, so that's why we see, like even on IoT and edge uh, devices, we see this uh, demand and uh, support for adding multiple heterogeneous cores, for example. Um, usually a combination of Cortex-A's, uh, ARM Cortex-M's and RISC-V cores that are added for uh, domain-specific scenarios, uh, for example, for machine learning workloads or computer vision, uh, use cases for like balancing power consumptions uh, and like the uh, application scenarios on, in a dynamic way. And specifically for uh, also security use cases, uh, we see uh, support of like um, separate processors, for, uh, for, like a secure enclave style of uh, like uh, processors for doing attestations, for doing systems uh, measurement, mon monitoring, verification, or like um, for supporting secure debugging. So uh, it's an exciting area. We have we have uh, multiple uh, components, multiple even security sensitive components, several trusted execution environment, several like uh, secure and clear processors. And um, we also have different like systems stack, like operating systems like Linux and hypervisors and uh, a form of like um, RTOS or uh, bare metal like containers on different cores. So um, in our team, we are working on different aspects of uh, systems design for such heterogeneous architectures, like with our hardware uh, partners. Uh, for example, uh, here you can see one of our uh, like hardware that we are working on, IMX8 ULP. That's uh, it's like from IMX8 family, and this specific one is like these details and internals are not like announced by NXP. So. Uh, here I'm just going to talk about uh, high-level architectures of uh, it and things that are publicly available. Uh, so, as you can see here, we support, for example, two Cortex A 835s, uh, separate Cortex M. Uh, each of them have like uh, separate like implementation of Trust Zone, Trust Zone A, Trust Zone M. Uh, we also have a separate core like secure enclave edge lock that's uh, also doing other hardware assisted uh, security tasks such as attestation, uh, systems measurements, monitoring, secure debugging, things like that. Uh, so this is basically like a um, typical heterogeneous architecture that I want to uh, discuss in this talk. Um, that you can see there are lots of peripherals here like uh, for DMAs and GPUs and uh, like uh, crypto accelerators, CAM, and uh, so these hardware should be like uh, shared or depends on the uh, and use case, like for, from our customers, depends on that. It should be like uh, dedicated to each of these cores and be protected. Uh, to fully utilize the uh, underlying hardware features here, uh, we need a proper hardware partitioning mechanism. We need a, a mechanism that um, enables application developers to uh, like uh, have some controls over like assigning which peripherals to which core, and uh, these are should be like um, utilized depends on applications like use cases. Uh, so at the end, we want like developers, uh, we want the application designers to maxi maximize their uh, use of hardware, so to benefit from all the hardware features that are available for them. And this cannot be possible uh, with a fixed like partitioning, like a separated uh, separation logic that is like cannot be changed by, by them. Uh, and uh, so some of the uh, like partitioning parts can be done statically. For example, like uh, secure world systems, uh, like uh, stacks such as like DRAM usage, DRAM uh, like uh, memory ranges can be partitioned statically because we don't expect a lot of change uh, like uh, in, on overall layout. 
or some of like uh, trust on like GPIO or uh, CAM interface for like crypto uh, usage. So things like that, uh, yeah, it's okay to be a st a partitioned statically and we don't expect like applications to change them a lot too. But uh, there are other uh, peripherals like DMAs, like GPUs. These are should be like more on control of uh, application designer. And uh, that, that's what I'm going to mostly talk about, like uh, what, uh, what changes we need to do on like operating systems, on like systems stack uh, between like this uh, cores and also like uh, the challenges we have on, uh, for example, securely debugging this, like uh, enabling both like a flexible and secure way of uh, like uh, controlling the hardware partitioning part here. Uh, fortunately, hardware support, like uh, features for uh, partitioning memory and peripherals, is also having a significant progress. Uh, we, this is a, a relatively active area. We see like uh, features, like for example, uh, RDCs, resource domain and uh, controllers, and for partitioning memory and peripherals on IMX uh, families. We see like SMMUs uh, on different uh, hardwares. We see MPUs. We see XPPUs on like uh, SPM, like uh, sec uh, secure partitioning uh, management on uh, ARM v9 uh, boards. Uh, we also had like trust on address space controller, trust on uh, peripheral controllers. All of these uh, features uh, are designed for like uh, partitioning a part of the system. Some of them can be like uh, cover more of the systems, for example, like XRDCs and TRDCs for uh, like covering the whole like Cortex M and Cortex A uh, like inter interactions. Uh, but some can be like only accessible, for example, inside the secure board, like trust zone, uh, like uh, uh, controllers. And so they have different designs. They have different protection capabilities and they have uh, different like security models. Uh, and uh, now we see that several of these uh, features can be supported on the same uh, device, on the same SOC. And uh, the secure integrations of like these features uh, based on like different thread models and uh, like use cases, it's very challenging. And here I um, briefly introduced some of these hardware features that we are using for partitioning. Uh, for example, RDCs, remote, uh, resource domain controllers, are uh, features that like um, enable access control assignments on a wide range of memories and peripherals. And uh, like we have different versions of RDCs, like uh, XRDCs, TRDCs, depends on like the uh, core we support. But uh, in a high level, uh, this uh, feature enable us to assign a set of like resources to like different uh, processing domains. And we have a limited number of domains, uh, like eight or 16, uh, depends on the uh, like platform. Uh, but uh, when you assign like access control policies on like this set of, uh, like for example, a few set of resources on a specific domain, uh, those resources cannot be accessed by another domain uh, unless there is like a specific, uh, explicit um, access control policy uh, defined, and uh, the policies uh, the policy uh, can be like different for each privilege uh, level. So RDCs uh, like uh, are aware of the secure board uh, like uh, privilege layers like secure board kernel mode, user space mode, uh, and also the normal board uh, like layer. So. Uh, we can assign security attributes for like uh, also logical separation of like secure world uh, from the normal world, uh, both memory and peripherals. RDCs are, uh, are basically a, a combination of like uh, multiple hardware submodules, like uh, multiple uh, hardware uh, components, uh, such as like uh, MDAC for domain access control assignment on like every bus transaction for uh, like such, such as PAC for peripheral access control assignment, like MRCs for memory region controller, and uh, like other components that are different, the implementation and their details are different, uh, depends on like um, the uh, underlying hardware, like which core, Cortex M or like Cortex A. And, uh, but in a high level uh, like um, description, uh, RDCs enable us for uh, to like assign access control policies over every 
bus transaction and every memory region and address space regions that we want and uh, assign them to like a specific domains with like a specific domain IDs and uh, assign sec uh, specific security attributes to each of like uh, each of them uh, to separate for example secure world user space like resources from normal world uh, or like from secure world uh, kernel uh, like mode so it has like a four level hierarchical uh, access control um, policy in a um, simplified example for example using rdc's uh, we can uh, have like uh, we can assign different domains for different scenarios for our application sites uh, like application stack that is uh, that are uh, using like cortex a uh, we can partition the resources to for example trust on a specific resources would be like separated from user space like uh, resources uh, for application sites such as like dma like uh, dram like different dram ranges and at the same time we also uh, could uh, partition our cortex m for real time like uh, workloads uh, so, for example, in Cortex M, uh, like edge like like uh, secure enclave resources would be uh, like uh, part would be isolated from like TZM, like trust on Cortex M, and uh, like or from DMA or GPUs and like micro power like uh, partitions. So um, this this would be like for each of like these uh, workloads, we can have like proper uh, partitioning of resources. And also for the shared resources, we can assign a specific like another uh, domain. So the shared resources uh, could have like a, a specific like security policies that are more suitable for a shared environment than for like a separate uh, environments for like applications or uh, real time workloads. We also have uh, like in our uh, hardware, we also have the support for like uh, multiple uh, TEs and enclaves. And uh, so, as you probably know, like TEs are used uh, for like shielding um, sensitive code base, like sensitive code or data uh, from um, host operating system or hypervisors that are having a like really large uh, like code base, and we want to protect this like uh, sensitive parts of our system inside the uh, like trust zone or inside like a uh, like secure enclave. So uh, these hardware components are designed for reducing the attack uh, vectors and uh, reducing the uh, TCP of the entire system. And uh, TEs are usually like supporting different uh, features and they're not all like supporting the same uh, set of capabilities. Uh, for example, like uh, for even like trust zone, there are different implementations of like uh, trust zone. Some only like protects like memory, some like uh, for example, TZPC, like if enabled, this like uh, allows us to isolate uh, like trust on specific peripherals. Uh, for like secure boots, because like trust on by default it doesn't like enable it. It needs like some sort of like um, trust on basically virtualized uh, TPM kind of capability inside trust on. Or we are using like uh, edge like secure boot, for example, for as an alternative for like pure hardware based uh, secure boot feature. Uh, so the uh, features of like enclaves for, like, for attestation, for measurement, for like sealing, uh, these are different, but uh, that's why like um, if like an enclave cannot provide you like with all of these features, it's usually like better to have like several like different com uh, components and combine them together to get uh, like a, a strong uh, security features that we need for uh, different use cases. And when we have uh, like Trashon specific like uh, partitioning capabilities, uh, for example, Trashon like per, uh, PC for per, uh, peripheral controller, like uh, address space controller, uh, when these features are uh, like together, we also have like additional uh, capabilities for Trashon specific like uh, hardware resources. And the integrations with uh, like uh, RDCs, like for trust on like uh, Cortex A and Cortex A, and like the uh, RDC, uh, like on each of the cores, the proper integrations, uh, like in a secure way, in a like effective way, uh, it's, it's really important. Uh, also, especially like uh, that, we're going to have even more fine grained partitioning features, like uh, in with uh, ARM v9 architecture, with like RALM uh, support, and 
um, like confidential computer architecture that we're going to have like uh, even more partitioning uh, capabilities, partitioning manager uh, for like uh, fine grained uh, like privilege separation inside like or uh, secure vault. When we have uh, such a heterogeneous environment, uh, our partitioning framework is uh, really important to be aware of uh, or all of the trust boundaries that we have on uh, like underlying hardware. And uh, that's why our uh, like partitioning framework here, uh, as you can see, it has like several components running on different privilege layers from like our trust on kernel, uh, TFA on the uh, like secure monitor mode, and the Linux kernel on normal world, uh, normal world. and all of these components uh, are collaborating together for uh, getting updates on any like uh, par hardware partitioning changes, assigning security policies, and uh, like uh, making sure that the system is uh, like the, all of the policies are in a stable way. And they also we also need uh, like cross boundaries like collaboration for enabling secure debugging. Uh, because like some of these uh, partitioning policies are uh, related to like trust on a stack, some of like related to the kernel, uh, the view boot. So the debugging across uh, these privileged boundaries is a challenging task. It needs like all of these layers to collaborate with each other. Uh, also another uh, important design uh, principle for us is to be able to uh, scale uh, or hardware support. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we're going to like see more and more like hardware security features for uh, compartmentalization for like uh, isolation. And if we if we really want to like uh, properly utilize this hardware, we need uh, this, we need to uh, design the systems to be able to uh, scale to maintain the stacks like in a secure way, uh, to like have an abstractions that could be like. Uh, could have different backends, different uh, T kernel backends, different uh, hardware uh, drivers, and uh, this is uh, this is important for like uh, properly um, using the hardware security features on or underlying hardware. On Linux side, uh, we have our sphere partitioning module that uh, can be enabled with uh, kernel config uh, sphere partition. And uh, this module is the first layer of uh, our abstraction for uh, parsing and getting all user space uh, like uh, partitioning configs, partitioning policies uh, from our specific like device tree overly and the interfaces for like uh, all range of like uh, peripherals. Uh, so uh, this module, uh, the main job would be like uh, to have this unified abstraction parse all of uh, the uh, required uh, policies and configurations, and uh, it constantly collaborating with our TE partitioning module. So it's uh, collaborating with our TE driver for uh, like assigning the shared uh, memory buffers and RPCs for uh, checking the updates and uh, security uh, partitioning policies, and also uh, asking the TE for uh, changing a, a specific uh, policy. So you can uh, see here, for example, uh, if an application developer wants to like enable an uh, RDC protected, like XRDC protected CAM, uh, like crypto accelerator on their uh, like platform, on their core, they can just uh, use this device tree, a simple device tree config, and uh, then the partitioning framework uh, does all the hard uh, work for seeing if there is a conflict or uh, like it can be enabled and uh, enable the, uh, the whole uh, partitioning policy. Uh, and uh, we have like the similar interface, similar abstractions for all uh, the peripherals, available peripherals on our uh, devices. And uh, these are the basically the devices that can be shared. Um, and these are different from like uh, security sensitive like uh, resources that we already like assigned for our secure world. These are important for uh, like security of the whole systems. For example, for trust on a stack uh, and like inter uh, interactions with or like uh, edge like enclave. And so, uh, these are basically uh, the hardware resources that can be shared. And it's okay to like um, to be under control of like application developers. 
uh, but uh, definitely are uh, separated from the security sensitive like resources that we already assigned to our uh, like TES tags are all, and all of our security sensitive components. Um, there are also some uh, like hardware based limitations and that is causing some non trivial challenges for uh, like on uh, our Linux side. Um, for example, when we have like uh, TZA or TZM enabled, uh, we already have like assigned some security attributes on different domains, and that's why the Linux domain, uh, like on the normal world, uh, when it's running on a normal world, it cannot read or write like uh, privileged registers from that are going to affect uh, the other domains layout and like policy changes. And uh, that's why we are using our trusted word, the component, partitioning components, to finalize the actual configurations for uh, assigning the policy it has like the right access to the uh, to the registers, to RDC registers. And uh, also uh, this is important, for example, for domain specific fault handling, for like debugging between uh, different domains. And uh, also, like inside our uh, like our Linux environment, since we also uh, having a virtualized environment for like application like virtualization, and uh, none of like these hardware features can be actually like for example RDCs can be virtualized. So in a power virtualized environment, uh, we have some challenges for exposing these features to uh, our like uh, guest virtual machines. Uh, we are resolving most of these challenges through our uh, trusted uh, like, uh, TE partitioning module. And uh, this uh, module is the one that is uh, like uh, responsible for uh, like finalizing uh, the actual uh, partitioning. So it has the uh, hardware, different hardware backends, uh, like uh, all of these hardware features for partitioning, like XRGC, TRDC, these, all of these drivers. Uh, our backend of this unified abstraction. And uh, it's um, also uh, responsible for enabling secure error handling between unsecure file handling between different privilege layers. Uh, so um, the interactions between like this, these components can cause some performance overhead. Uh, but uh, we, we also need to do more evaluation uh, like on that based on different application scenarios. But uh, currently, it doesn't add uh, like a large overhead. It's reasonable, uh, and uh, mostly the uh, shared memory and like uh, RPC communications, the comments for collaborating between these components are very uh, small. Uh, so it's uh, not like uh, a both. It's not even like a large uh, like um, buffer share, la uh, large data transfer. Or also like the attack vectors between them, it's the, it's a we keep the interface very narrow, uh, narrow and small. So since we are uh, enabling a, a hardware partitioning on like the whole system, uh, this is a, a larger scope with like lots of fine grain memory ranges and peripherals. So uh, proper fault handling and the secure debugging between all of these like domains is uh, challenging. Especially like, um, for example, when an uh, access control violation happens in uh, one of the domains, uh, it can happen, it can cause like uh, RDC faults in that domain, or it can like be cascaded and cause multiple violations on the uh, different domains. Uh, so fortunately, we have like uh, fine grained debug uh, registers and debugging support for all of like uh, the, uh, all of uh, our hardware uh, like, uh, resources that we are uh, partitioning but uh, the problem is that like uh, not all domains can uh, access uh, read or write and they, they don't have that uh, read or write access to other domains like debug registers uh, so for properly like uh, debugging between like all these cross uh, like boundaries uh, we, we assign it a specific like uh, debug domain uh, and uh, or TE basically uh, partitioning module. That one is uh, like uh, is responsible for giving this debug uh, uh, domain uh, the privileges for uh, the privileges for uh, like uh, monitoring for reading and uh, writing for and for handling all of uh, like 
partitioning specific faults that uh, any access control violations that are happening uh, between like different domains. And that's why uh, we had uh, also some synchronization issues with uh, our Linux kernel module. Uh, that's uh, like um, because the Linux domain was different from like this domain, and uh, when you want to like get uh, get some of the uh, like debugging registers, it, the context switching and the synchronization for the Linux fault handler to like switch to that domain. Uh, was uh, causing some issues, and uh, that's uh, why we like uh, adding like a specific SMC calls to our uh, like uh, TE kernel to our uh, TE partitioning modules for giving the right uh, like uh, error messages for like the full report of uh, what's going on and which domain to and pass it that to our Linux kernel uh, for like um, proper debugging. So here, for example, you can see like a simple uh, like version of our um, error reporting mechanism for like uh, access violation on uh, like one of the partitioning configurations. It says like, for example, this DDR like this DRAM this uh, region uh, has the access control violation on like domain seven and in that address uh, in that address and. There are like also multiple access violations that are coming from the right access. Um, like uh, they're coming from like non-secure or privilege mode. Uh, that are uh, tried uh, like to have the right access and the access uh, causes like uh, access policy violations on that uh, partition. Uh, so uh, we also had like a specific uh, like um, limitations. We see like limitations from like Open OCD, GDB, and for like domains, uh, because they're not designed for like supporting these modern hardware features for uh, debugging, and uh, we we need to like uh, also extend this uh, these features for considering like for like extending uh, them to these hardware uh, debugging features and these concepts of like uh, partitioning, the concepts of domains. So these are uh, these are should be integrated to our uh, debugging frameworks. Uh, so in this talk, uh, I briefly described the problem of uh, the problems in hardware partitioning in on heterogeneous architectures. How uh, we, it's challenging to uh, do it securely in a more flexible and more dynamic way. And I describe our current solution, current uh, design, and uh, some of the challenges that we are still uh, uh, working on that because it's an uh, ongoing work. Uh, as a uh, final uh, point for this community, uh, it's important for us to know that uh, like, since we are adding more and more hardware security features for uh, peripheral isolation, for partitioning, for memory isolation, and these features are going to be integrated in one uh, single heterogeneous architecture in one uh, device. And it's um, important for our systems stack, especially our operating system, uh, to have to know these concepts of domains, like to have the right abstractions for the partition uh, resources. And without this uh, abstraction, it's hard to enable secure and like effective ways for cross-domain uh, collaborations, for uh, cross-domain like uh, debugging and attacking uh, investigation systems. Uh, so uh, this feature, this this concept, is still uh, kind of missing from our systems stack, and especially for our more uh, operating system. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have, and thank you.